School is out and summer is here, but there's so much news to tell you about from the end of the school year. We've got groundbreaking for new schools. Amanda Richter has news about a record setting donation and Tara Cox has a way for you to help kids this summer. Let's go inside Vancouver Public Schools. Welcome to the show. I'm Nick Bull. The end of the school year is always bittersweet, but this year it leans a bit more towards the sweet side. We have tons of great stories for you, but first, let's do our top three. These are our three favorite social media posts about the BPS community. Number three comes from Coin6 news anchor Jenny Hansen. She and her station hosted fifth graders from Sacagawea Elementary School for a special field trip. Sacagawea offers all of its fifth graders the chance to work on Skyhawk News, a news show produced by their teacher, Jeff Lee. So this was a real thrill for those budding journalists. Our number two comes from Ann Bowling. She posted this photo from the Blue Ribbon Track Meet, where the best elementary school track and field athletes get to compete. They host it every year at Columbia River High School, and as you can see from the big crowd in the stands, it is a very popular event for families. And our number one comes from Travis Campbell. He tweeted about a group of graduates from the GATE program. GATE is where students who face some challenges in life get the chance to prepare themselves for life as adults. Students earn life and academic skills. Congratulations to those graduates. What a great group of smiling faces. And one of the coolest traditions of the end of the school year brings is high school students back to where it all began, elementary school. We stopped by Philida Elementary School for a grad walk. Seniors from Columbia River High School, decked out in their caps and gowns, walked up and down the halls, grabbing high fives from younger students. Some of these graduates actually attended Philida and returning to their old school made them reflect on when they were little. It's weird to think that I was that at one point and now I'm here and at that point I thought college was so far away. Graduating was like just a dream out in nowhere and it's actually it's like yes you can you can do this this is you'll be here it's extra special for teachers like Cheyenne Herbolt who saw her old students all grown up oh my gosh it's the best thing about being a teacher is to finally see that they make that final end crossing in their cap and gown and they look so fabulous for Philida students looking up at these new graduates is a glimpse into their own future I think it would be cool to be in high school because um, I can make lots of new friends. It's inspiring because I know I'm going to be one of them and I know that I'm going to love to go and clap little kindergarten in their hands and like be like, you're going to be one too in a long time. <laughs> this wasn't the only grad walk. Students from every high school visited elementary and middle schools to get kudos on their accomplishment and to encourage younger kids to reach for the finish line. And once again this year, seniors from the four comprehensive high schools, Skyview, Fort Vancouver, Hudson's Bay, and Columbia River, held their graduation ceremonies at the Sunlight Supply Amphitheater in Ridgefield. It's a big venue, so there was enough room for every family member to squeeze in and see their graduates' big moment. All told, more than a thousand kids walked across that stage over two nights. And if you missed the graduations or you want to see them again, you are in luck. All of the graduations will be on repeat this summer on Comcast Channel 328. Just head to ESD112.org slash TV, et cetera, for the schedule. Or if you'd rather watch online, the VPS YouTube channel has you covered. Check out YouTube.com slash VanSDTV. Time now for a ReSchools update, the latest on construction projects paid for by your bond dollars. We have reached the next step in new buildings for McLaughlin Middle School and Marshall Elementary Schools. It's the ceremonial groundbreaking. 
A good crowd came out to see students from both Mac and Marshall break ground on the construction project. Many of the students were also part of the planning process between architects, school officials, and district leaders. The plans for the schools include a shared space between the two buildings, which will go up on the land between the existing sites. I'm excited to be in a new building. Um, I'm excited to be connected to the middle school um, and just for the opportunities that our, our students are going to have in the new space. Of course, these new buildings are possible thanks to a bond measure approved by voters. A student we spoke to and the superintendent both wanted to thank the community. I think it says that they care a lot about how this, uh, the students like learning community and they care a lot about um, what the school looks like for their, uh, for their students of Vancouver. I'm just so proud of our community routinely, routinely stepping forward and donating time, talent and treasure to their children and to their public schools. So I'm so very grateful. The real dirt digging begins in July when construction crews arrive. The district expects those new campuses to be open to students in 2019. And there are more groundbreakings coming up. The next one is on June 29th at Ogden Elementary. It's important to note these groundbreakings are ceremonial and the projects are pending contract approval by the school board. The schedule on your screen is for the rest of the calendar year and includes buildings that won't be replaced but will be getting additional classrooms. And those plans are now available on the district website. A total of five schools will see extra classroom space to ease crowding in the kindergarten through third grade levels. This project was paid for with a combination of bond dollars and a grant from the state. The schools to be expanded are, expanded are Harney, Philida, Eisenhower, Fruit Valley, and Salmon Creek. And there are also new plans out for replacement of Truman Elementary. Let's take a look. Truman will be completely replaced as part of the bond construction. The public got its first glimpse at the plans a couple of weeks ago in a special event at the school. The plans for the school came from a collaboration between architects, district leaders, and also representatives from the school board. And here are some more good news for elementary school students over at Harney and other schools. New playground equipment is going in. The new playgrounds include safe play surfaces to replace older bark dust style playgrounds that are expensive to keep up and are dirty for the kids playing in them. Several schools already have completed their playground replacements, and this is the next round of projects. And if you want to keep up with the latest in construction projects, you can watch new episodes of this show, and you can go to the district website, vansd.org slash reschools, see updates on what's happening right now, and get a schedule for future projects. It's one thing to win a state championship, clawing and scratching your way through a season to be the last one standing. That's something no one can take away from you. It's another thing to achieve perfection, and that's exactly what Columbia River High School did, winning the 2A state soccer championship. Lifting the 2A championship trophy, Columbia River's soccer team is a happy, relaxed bunch. But heading into the championship game against Burlington Edison, players felt the pressure. We were, we were all pretty anxious to get it to start playing. Columbia River came into the title game undefeated. Number one, you know, you obviously have a target on your back and you're going to get everybody's best game and everybody wants to give you that first loss. But as soon as the clock started, it was just another game and it got physical quickly. After a foul was called at the 24 minute mark, Jack Kolosvari scored on a set play as the ball ricocheted off a defender. That put the Chieftains up 1-0. Just a couple of minutes into the second half, Colos Vario was tackled inside the box, setting up this penalty kick. That was the final score, giving the Chieftains another shutout in what proved to be the greatest season in school history. For us to have gone 23-0, and 0, you know, win a state championship in the process, win a district championship in the process, and a league title, uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty special. Last year, the Chieftains were stunned in the first round, and that loss propelled them this year. Just coming from last year, that loss to Highline, you know, just that brought us all together and that made us super close to each other. It also kept them focused when it would have been easy to coast. You know, they managed to stay hungry and they didn't take their foot off the gas and, um, and I think that's a big reason why we were able to go undefeated this year. This is the first boys soccer title in school history. The girls have three. Philemon Afenegas is the head of both coaching squads. They, they did all they could to get us where we're at, so. But he puts the credit with his teams. The reality of it is, is you know, they make me look good. For seniors like David Gonzalez, this is the culmination of four years of hard work. I just, it's unreal. Like I just being the first team to go undefeated, win state here. That's just, it's an unreal feeling. I just, I'm speechless. I don't know. 
It has been an incredible year for Coach Fenegas. He led the girls team at Columbia River to the championship game last fall where they fell to Liberty High School. River isn't the only school that claimed a state title this spring. In fact, their neighbor to the north, Skyview, took home two championships in tennis, and they did it for the second straight year. And your 2018 boys team state champions from Skyview High School. That's right, two straight team championships for the Skyview Storm boys tennis team. And for senior Andrew Cabasi. Andrew Cabasi. Yeah, Andrew! Back to back! Woo! That's two straight singles championships. He's definitely established himself as uh, one of the best, uh, and not just at Skyview, but in Southwest Washington history. Cabasi was the favorite going into the state tournament in the Tri-Cities. I knew it was going to be tough, and I knew that a lot of people would be counting on me to win, um, but uh, I mean, you have a job to do and you go and do it. It's that no-nonsense attitude that makes Andrew a champion. I've never seen a kid more determined and more uh, able to take it to another level when his back's against the wall. And so he just is not going to back down when there's pressure on or when he loses a set or loses, you know, gets down. He's just, he's going to come back uh, and win. Andrew credits his teammates for helping him win a difficult third set to seal the title. And I went up and talked to all my friends and they're like, you can do it, you can do it. And um, yeah, just went in loose to the third set and um, played the best tennis I've ever played. Ask coach Jay Gowan and he'll tell you Andrew is more than just a great tennis player. Usually with athletes of that caliber, uh, they're all about themselves and, and he has always been more proud of the team. A team that includes Joey Gaylor and Christopher Shepard, whose sixth place finish in doubles sealed the 4A team championship. The players credit two factors for their success. Number one, a tight team atmosphere. We're all good friends, we all laugh together, we all joke together. We have a ritual of eating Olive Garden the night before. Number two, Coach Gowan and his staff. He, he does a lot to make sure that we're we're doing our best in our matches and that we're focused and he helps us he helped us a lot with strategy. He wants to make tennis fun. Obviously winning's important, but I mean we play sports to have fun and he really uh, makes that happen. The tennis and winning and stuff like that so far down our priority list uh, as a program. It's really all about developing a core group that cares about each other, roots for each other, and the players bought into that. They make it really easy uh, as a coach. Two years in a row. Yeah. 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 Andrew Cabasi tells me that his tennis career isn't done just yet. He'll be playing at Willamette University next school year. The Skyview baseball team deserves accolades after its fantastic 2018 season. They finished second in state in their sport and first in academics. The Storm made it all the way to the championship game, winning 22 games this year. But more importantly, they also took care of business in the classroom. They led the 4A level in team GPA with a whopping 3.71. That earned them the Academic Achievement Award. Way to go, Storm. Young children are the big winners after a huge gift from an anonymous donor. Someone gave more than half a million dollars to the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools to go toward early learning programs and elementary schools. The total donation clocked in at a whopping $541,300. It's the largest single gift in the 30-year history of the Foundation. And Amanda Richter is standing by. She is joined by Nada Wheelock from the Foundation. Amanda. Thanks, Nick. We wanted to talk to Nada, the Executive Director of the Foundation, about what this donation will mean for students. Nada, thanks for joining us. When you first heard about the donation, what was your reaction? I was quite shocked, actually. Um, there were a number of us that had been in conversations with this donor, and when we stepped back and saw the magnitude of this donation, it really was exciting to think that in a very short period of time, we took a teacher's brilliant idea and a pilot and were able to help the district to accelerate the implementation of this plan in a very short period of time. So tell us more about that idea, the preschool, because I understand that's where most of the money is going to be directed. That's correct. The majority of the funding will support an expansion of a new evening preschool explorer program. And uh, the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools has partnered with Vancouver for many years on early learning, starting with 123 Grow and Learn and Kindergarten Jump Start, where we were, um, thanks to our donors, able to be early investors in those programs. And the um, Preschool Explorer program is an extension of that, bringing in um, more access to early learning for more families and adding a very important parent engagement component to that program. So um, 
that's the program. <laughs> so. And how about the rest of the donation? How will that be directed? Sure, the rest of the donation will help all Vancouver students. We will be able to do direct support that includes removing basic needs barriers, as well as providing resources for enrichment, engagement, and mentoring. So overall, what do you think that this money will mean for students and families? Well, we know that more students will be able to graduate on time because of the addition and expansion of early learning. There's a direct line correlation between children being ready for kindergarten and the graduation rate. And so with hundreds more students being able to be part of a quality early learning program and bringing parents in as partners, uh, helping parents learn skills and strategies that they can use with their preschool students, and then that um, also helps other students at home, even younger learners that aren't ready for preschool yet. So we know that um, together this partnership will help even more families. Well, it's a tremendously generous donation and it sounds like it will benefit a lot of kids and families, so that's exciting. Nada, thanks for joining us. Nick, back to you. Thanks, Amanda. That's not the only good news for families with young kids. The Together for Students initiative has granted the district nearly $150,000 for early childhood education. The money will allow VPS to partner with Educational Service District 112 to provide extra support to families, academic and non-academic, to help kids from childbirth through third grade. It will focus on five low-income schools in Vancouver. Now you don't need a lot of money to help kids. Small gestures by a lot of people really add up and your opportunity to help is coming up this summer. Joining us now with more is Tara Cox from the district's communications office. Tara? Thanks Nick. An annual school supply drive called Right From The Start brings together community members and businesses to gather supplies for kids in need. Preparation for the drive has already started. We stopped by Washington Elementary where COIN News Channel 6 was recording a public service announcement to support the event. Right From The Start is a community-wide project that includes both Vancouver and Evergreen Public Schools. For the promo, COIN featured several students talking about school. We like having the kids kind of speak for themselves, you know, there's no better salesman. <laughs> they are so eloquent. I'm always surprised at the fun stuff they say. We just wanted to showcase the kids. They're the ones who benefit and, you know, it makes people feel good to see kind of like where their donations are going. <laughs> Once again this year, the Right From The Start campaign is supported by Dick Hanna Automotive Dealers. There are a number of other community partners involved as well. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that promo, featuring kids from right here in Vancouver. And once the drive begins this summer, you can drop off new, unwrapped school supplies at participating businesses all over Vancouver. You can also donate money directly to the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools. And there's one other big summer event to put on your calendar. The Go Ready Back to School Readiness Festival is back on again this year at Hudson's Bay High School. Thousands of people attend every year, getting free clothes, haircuts, vision screenings, and more. There are also a wide variety of school district staff and community groups on hand to connect with parents with opportunities for their kids. Free hot dogs don't hurt either. Go Ready is set for August 22nd at 10 a.m. There are also lots of opportunities to keep your kids learning this summer. Check out the district website or ask at the front desk of your child's school for more information. Nick, back to you. Thanks, Tara. You know, usually one school or another places its marching band in the Starlight Parade, one of the Rose Festival's premier events. But this time, for the first time in more than 10 years, the marching bands from Fort Vancouver, Columbia River, Hudson's Bay, and Skyview teamed up to form what they called a mega band. Hey, guys. I know that this is not the norm. It's a combination of all the high school marching bands from Vancouver Public Schools all coming together to do the Starlight Parade together. It's just kind of the one that we've always wanted to do because it's just a big party. Skyview's got a huge representation, Bay's got a huge representation, and then uh, slightly smaller programs, Fort and um, Columbia River. We're going to have about 400 people in this band, including flag and dance, and then the band. It's going to be fun. Individual bands often do Starlight on their own, so it hasn't. we haven't been able to coordinate it. This is the year when we were able to pull it off. To my knowledge, this is the first time easily in the last 10 years. I am the drum major. I lead the band and command them. I'm in the front and I keep the tempo for the whole band.
big band family. We just stay in our big family. It's a lot of fun to be able to work with people that are uh, different skill levels, and especially if they're better than you. It's, it's really fun to work with people and help them to improve and have them improve you as well. So everyone's working to make it work and then when they see that it's all working with strangers it's a really awesome experience everyone's getting along great a very very positive experience I think for all the students the mega band was a huge hit at the Rose Festival lots of photos on Twitter I suggest you take a look Students who are thinking about entering a trade after high school got a chance to see what their future might look like. The school district's maintenance team hosted a group from Hudson's Bay High School to talk about careers that don't require a college education. Students in the Building Trades program at Hudson's Bay High School are trying to figure out what they want to do after school. Either electrical or finished carpentry maybe. On this special field trip, they're seeing what those kinds of careers might look like. They visited the school district shop to speak with workers in the maintenance department. They asked questions, watched demonstrations of the kind of equipment they'd be using, and got hands-on lessons in what it would be like to have a career in the trades. I liked it. It's really cool. Um, I just like seeing how everything works and just kind of the environment here. Yeah. For the maintenance team, it's a chance to get more involved. We work in an educational uh, facility and so we should be engaged and involved with the, with the kids learning um, and this is how we do it is just through our work. The Building Trades program is new this year and came in response to demand from employers. There simply aren't enough skilled workers to fill the open positions. There's a high demand for this work um, and we're really excited to see kids interested in that um, and so if we can be involved to educate or at least um, uh, make them aware of what's available out there, then that's what we want to do. The maintenance team's message got through to the kids. It gives you more inspiration, I guess like more of an excitement to actually like be wanting to work in this type of field, you know, because like I'm a senior, you're coming out of high school, you don't know what to do with your life, you're just like, okay, school's ending, what do I do now? So you can kind of get an idea of what's like happening here, what are you going to do, how are you going to work, if you're going to like the environment or not. The Building Trades class at Bay was new this school year and was a big hit with students and with local employers who see it as a way to prepare future employees. Now, if you drive by Fir Grove School on Falk Road, you may not notice it, but students and staff there hope to change that with their own community garden right out front. The garden boxes were built by students and staff who also planted all the vegetation. That includes flowers and produce. Fir Grove is a school for kids who need a little help with self-management, and this kind of hands-on project can help their personal development in a number of ways. They need opportunities to grow, and I feel like the garden is a perfect kind of metaphor for that, for obvious reasons. Um, we're all growing here. The kids are definitely putting a lot of work into not only the garden, but like personally. I've really seen the kids uh, gravitate towards it, and um, I've seen a lot of transformation. I like how it's just kind of fun to just walk in the garden and pick up gold. It's just a fun thing to do. And to plant the plants is just extremely fun. When we visited, it was pretty easy to see that the kids on the garden crew were excited about their garden. Staff at Fir Grove tell us that the students have responded positively to the added responsibility. There are two spots with garden boxes. The first, as I mentioned, is right there off Falk Road. And the second is right out front of the school when you walk in. And that's just one way Fir Grove is beautifying the school. The other is with a new mural inside painted by a local student. Carolyn Brown goes to Columbia River High School. Her art teacher encouraged her to do the mural after Fir Grove reached out in search of an artist. They had some rough ideas of what they wanted and Carolyn ran with it, adding her own touches along the way. She and the school are thrilled with how it turned out. I just love all the different colors. Um, I love its message about um, community and including everybody and just how welcoming it is. There are a number of words in the mural suggested by Fir Grove staff and Carolyn added her own as well. Next year she'll be attending art school. Time now for the big picture, our favorite image from social media. This one comes from Principal Heath Angelbeck at Salmon Creek Elementary. His students put on a performance of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and the breakout star stars, of course, were the Oompa Loompas. This is Heath taking a selfie with the actors. It's pretty impressive for an elementary school to put on a show that complicated, so congrats to the Huskies up at Salmon Creek.
Time now for what's happening, and if you were a kid, the answer is summer break. But as sweet as it is, it can't last forever, so I thought I'd play Debbie Downer and remind everybody the first day of school in the fall is August 29th. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. And that's it for us. This is our last show of the school year. I want to thank all of the people who helped make it happen again this year. Amanda Richter, Tara Cox, Chad Young, Ian Southworth, and countless others. Thank you. And until next year, I'm Nick Bull.